Welcome to Kitty Kate's Book Blog. Today I'm going to review two books for you. The first is The Bells by Danielle Clayton, and the second is The Wedding Date, written by Jasmine Guillory. So we'll start with The Bells. It's a young adult novel, um, just came out early this year. It's still early. Um, anyway, we'll start with my first impressions. It's to me, a completely new type of fantasy book, although I'm saying that and I haven't really read fantasy books that much, maybe yeah, a handful. Um, but I say it's new because it was very girly and I wasn't expecting that, um, which is kind of silly now that I look at the cover more closely. Obviously, it's going to be girly. There's a lot of pink and sicky sweet kind of descriptions of um, food and decor and... Uh, not what I would think of a typical fantasy. Um, there was a lot of hype for this book, which is why I picked it up. I was also interested because it's written by the woman who is the ch chief operating officer of We Need Diverse Books. Um, and I thought it would be a good read and an important read. And um, I wanted to see what all the fuss was about for all the hype of it. So the jacket, oh my God, how beautiful. Obviously, it's called The Bells. I'm sorry, I've got hair in my mouth. That happens. Um, it's totally glam. There's a beautiful young woman with caramel skin and flowers in her hair. And it just makes me feel pretty holding the book. Um, the book is told from Camilla Beauregard's point of view. She is our protagonist and one of the Bells. Um, so you'll know uh, more about The Bells in just a second, but... Um, I wanted to talk a little bit more about the feel of the book. Uh, it's mm, sort of, it, it's a fantasy book, I think, but it's also sort of magical realism. There's a lot of neat description um, and things that are almost possible, but not really possible. You've heard of a teacup pig. Um, well, in this book, the royalty have teacup elephants and teacup tigers and teacup alligators. Um, so you can just imagine these little creatures crawling around and being super cute. Um, there's post balloons and it's kind of their version of airmail where you post a letter onto a balloon and it just sort of floats to where it's supposed to go. Um, the reporters are called newsies, which sounds... Actually, that sounds like something I've heard before. Um, is it like a Broadway play or something? Newsies? Uh, and the... Um, what do you call those? The tabloids are called tattlers. Like, yeah, I thought that. So those little details, I thought, made it really um, fun to get into the world building, which is usually not for me. Um, so the plot, just so you know what it's going on in this book. So um, Camellia is a belle, and so are her sisters. And that means she's born beautiful, and that her job is going to be to beautify the citizens of Orleans, where she lives. Um, what's really weird about this society is, except for the Bells, everybody is born gray. Their skin is um, just sort of colorless, except for gray. Um, so they pay to have their bodies transformed. Um, so Camellia learns a dark secret about the... Uh, the ruling class in this society, Orleans, and she is sort of the one who has to spring into action and make sure that um, the evil doesn't take power or it's going to be the end for a lot of people. Um, so as far as themes, this book talks a lot about beauty, um, inner beauty and outer beauty. Um, it talks, it kind of makes you think about what kinds of sacrifices we're willing to make um, or we're expected to make as women um, and our appearances and what's really important. Um, and something interesting, the color of the skin, except for the fact that the um, people in Orleans are born gray, there's not really race in this story, um, which was interesting. And every color of skin is seen to be as beautiful as any other. Um, so it, it's it takes the importance out of color, but the import but really it's still 
um, talking about beauty. So I thought that was kind of interesting. And um, I should mention this is going to be a trilogy. This is just the first book. So I'd be really interested to see where book number two picks up and sort of what focus it takes, um, what its bigger message is going to be. So the characters, as I mentioned, are Bells. Um, there's also Raimi, who is um, Camellia's guard to make sure that she stays safe. And he's kind of your typical grump, curmudgeon, um, seems to be bothered by the fact that he has to watch after her, but you know that he really cares. So I got a kick out of that character. And August, um, who Camellia against the advice of um, the other bells who've warned her, who are more experienced, she starts to fall in love with this guy. So you'll see where that may lead to. Um, is that all I gotta say about that book? Oh, I can't really tell you what other book it reminded me of because it didn't. This was the first book of its kind that I've read and I really did enjoy it. Um, it started for me a bit slow, but like I said, I'm not usually a fantasy reader, so I don't always have the patience for lots of description, even if the description is very beautiful and sweet and tasty. Um, so it was a little bit slow, but I want to say the third, uh, the last third of this book, I flew through because I wanted, uh, once it got into the action, I really wanted to see where it led. Um, people who, oh, I would recommend this book to teenagers. Um, young women who are interested and um, want to really think more about what beauty means um, to themselves and in our society, what it means to be beautiful and um, what changes we are expected to make to please other people. Um, and yeah, so I would definitely recommend this book. I'm very excited for book number two, which um, doesn't exist yet as far as I know. Maybe it's in the mind of the author. Um, but The Bells by Danielle Clayton. Um, so I have a little bit of time left. I want to review The Wedding Date by Jasmine Guillory. And I apologize, Jasmine, if I don't know how to pronounce your name properly. Um, so my first impressions of this book was that it was going to be a cute romantic comedy. And it sort of was. Um, and in a really good way. Uh, the jacket was really whimsical and fun and romantic and squirrely and bubbly and effervescent and lovey. Um, and I really liked it and even liked it more after having read it as I look at the, the little things um, that are pictured. They all have meaning. So um, the format of this book is interesting. It's told in the third person, so the narrator knows the inner uh, thoughts of our characters. But it does switch perspective back and forth between Alexa, the main character, pictured here, and Drew, um, her, oh, it's backwards, her love interest pictured here. So um, it's not chapter by chapter uh, format, which can get a little old sometimes. Um, it sort of, it, it transitions mid-chapter in a really smooth way. So I enjoyed the fact that uh, you would just be getting to the point where you're like, uh-oh, what's Alexa going to think about that? And then it switches to Alexa's point of view, and you can find out what Alexa thought about that. Um, so the feel of the book, it's really a warm, empowering romantic feel. There's a lot of romance books out there that have to do with um, kind of like the power struggle between the two main characters, the man and the woman. But this, it's... It's not a struggle of power, which is interesting. Um, and there's a lot of empowering um, behavior and things that they say to each other in this book that I really enjoyed. Um, and it made me feel good. So just a little bit about the plot. You can I don't want to give it away, which I say in every review, but um, Alexa and Drew meet in a hotel elevator when it gets stuck there, stuck in there together. And they sort of have this instant connection and Drew, on a whim, invites Alexa to accompany him as his date to a wedding um, that's happening the following weekend. And uh, it's a big wedding because it's his ex-girlfriend and his best friend getting married. Um, 
And he has this really cute metaphor that he uses that he's going to the buffet, but he wants to bring a sandwich. Um, so Alexa is going to be her, his sandwich. Um, that'll make more sense when you read it, because you probably have no idea what I'm talking about. Um, so Alexa and Drew, their main struggle is denying that they're falling in love with each other. Um, they both have sort of their inner struggles as individuals, but the one thing that they share is that neither one of them is ready to admit um, that it's okay, you can be in love. So the themes are, um, uh, what I really liked was, I think I mentioned it earlier, that the characters are both equally matched and strong characters. They support each other when they get the chance. Even when they're sort of in the doghouse, um, they do what they can to make the other person feel strong and supported. Um, Alexa is African American and Drew is white. And so Drew um, has to learn to see some of things from her point of view. Um, and this comes up when Alexa is doing work on this very important project that's close to her heart. Um, that's a uh, playground area, park area for disadvantaged youth, for teenagers who need somebody to put them on the right track. Um, it's a program to sort of help them not end up going down a path of all of the bad things that can happen to um, disadvantaged youth, to African American youth. Um, so she, this is really important to her, and Drew doesn't immediately see why it's important. So she takes the time to explain it to him um, without making him feel really uh, stupid for not knowing. Um, and they open up a dialogue, which I think is really important. Uh, and then Drew's friends unfortunately make some racist comments to Alexa and he would never have guessed that some of them would do that but when they do he's there to back up Alexa and support her and does not question um, that you know that it was really a racist comment he's just there for her um, and apologizes for them being buttheads and um, stupid <laughs> so um, those are some of the themes. Also, comparisons. This happens to all of us, I think, um, that we compare ourselves. Oh, that person's so much more successful or beautiful or thin or whatever it may be. Um, and it's also about beauty and acceptance and love. Um, love! So, I told you the characters. I don't think... Oh, the only other two characters I want to mention. Uh, Drew's best friend, Carlos. He's sort of Drew's voice of reason, and what I loved about him is when you're ready to shout, Drew, you're such an idiot, um, Carlos pops onto the scene and he says, Drew, you're such an idiot. And the same thing is true of Maddie, who's Alexa's best friend, and she's there for Maddie, uh, Maddie's there for Alexa um, when Alexa starts to doubt herself. Oh, I shouldn't wear this outfit, I'm too curvy, I'm too this, and Maddie says, no, you're wearing it. Um, and yeah, so I think they both have really great best friends who do play an important role in the novel. So I would definitely recommend this. I gave this one five stars because it just made me feel so good. Um, it's a warm romance with the strong characters that you're looking for. Um, it's not your uh, typical um, one person is the stronger one and the other one has to learn to make compromises. It's not about compromises. It's about them being who they are and loving each other. Um, yeah. Anyway, five stars. I definitely recommend it. I hope you come back to the blog for more.